Hello everyone, today I thought we would cover setting up this toast notification system whenever you create a post that just causes a small little pop-up to appear in the top right of your screen that can of course be changed depending on where you want to put it. It's just a couple CSS classes. To do this we'll be using Rails 7's built-in Tailwind support. We'll also be using Flowbyte and their CDN. Uh, they also have instructions if you want to add this directly into your application. I know sometimes people uh, prefer that. I just want to make a note of that real quick uh, that, you know, CDNs aren't always inherently bad. Sometimes there is a benefit to using a CDN, namely if you want stuff to be, you know, sent to the customers and you only have a limited server space, you don't have servers all over the world. Sometimes using the CDN is the right approach, it's, which is why we cover that. Uh, but they do have directions if you want to set up your Tailwind stuff, and I'll show you how to do that real quick. Uh, the last thing we're going to be doing, because this only gives you a dismissible notification, is we're also going to be using a stimulus component from stimuluscomponents.com that includes the uh, dismissible and uh, animated components right here, which will cause it to slide in and slide out. So we're sort of adding the two together to get this functionality. And honestly, at this point, the intro is probably longer than the entire video is going to be. So let's just go ahead and let's get started. We're going to do a Rails new, call it video, do a dash J of ES build and a dash C of Tailwind. Now, I do want to say we're not going to be styling the whole application. Uh, so like, as you can see here, it's still pretty, you know, bare. Uh, if you do want to do that, I'd suggest looking into Tailwind CSS if you're not familiar. Essentially, you just use a bunch of classes to style everything, uh, even more so than you would with like Bootstrap. You're going to be putting like 10, 20 classes on certain components, even like your, your H1s to make them look right. So it might look a little bare out of the box, but as you start to construct your components that way, you'll notice that, uh, you know, things just have more of a cohesive flow to them than if you just, you know, mash together a bunch of Bootstrap with some custom styling. But okay, to get started, we need to create some posts so that we at least have something to, you know, create a notification for. So let's do a Rails G scaffold. I'm gonna hit F11 to full screen. We're gonna call this post, give each post a title and a body of type text. And the deer right outside my window are looking at me like I'm disturbing them. Uh, we're then gonna do a Rails G and uh, let's do a stimulus and we'll call this the uh, notifications stimulus controller. So that'll be our JavaScript controller. So now that we have that, the only other thing we really have to worry about if you're on Ruby 3.2 is you guessed it, we have to open this up in VS Code because we have to add the form and gem from their GitHub page uh, because I'm still causing issues for myself. So we're gonna come into the gem file, scroll down to the bottom, hit enter, paste it in, and then we can run a bundle command in our terminal here to grab the uh, main branch of the form and gem. That works for us. Okay, so now that we have that, we have our stimulus controller, we have our Tailwind, we can see the Tailwind config right here. And this is where you would come into the uh, Flowbyte stuff. And in the getting started, you would run a yarn add Flowbyte. You would then add the plugins to your module exports. So you'd have to add it in here, right? And then you would add your content in here. So you grab this, do a comma right here and do something like that. Uh, and at this point, you know, you, you include the JavaScript wherever you want to, and then you're done. Now, if you want to use the CDN instead, uh, and remember, you're you're running this with bin slash dev because that runs your proc file. Your proc file runs your uh, web server, your Rails server, your JavaScript, and your CSS. So if you're not running bin slash dev and you're instead running Rails S, that's not going to work for you. Uh, but okay, now if we want the CDN, we can just come down here. We can copy two of these, come into our app, views, layouts, application.html.erb. We can paste the CSS up top and we grab the JavaScript and we throw it below the yield tag and then we should be good to go. Now let's come into our config and our routes.rb and in here we're just going to say this should have a root that's the post controller and the index action. Let's go ahead and let's run a bin slash dev and go over to uh, localhost port 3000. It'll ask us to run our migrations. We just click the button and now we're in our application. You can see here it's pretty bare out of the box. We don't even have that styling that, that like changes what the H1 tag for our header is. That's fine though. We can click new post, do one, two, three, four, five, six, create the post and all of that's working. But we of course want to add in this component. And that's where we, we can come over to the Flowbyte page we can search for toast or you can just scroll down until you can find the toast uh, label here, which a uh, bit of a side tangent, I guess. But uh, the last company I worked at, there was this huge thing uh, 
debate with the customer where we ended up having to actually make the icon for the toast notification a piece of toast uh, because there was a lot of miscommunication. So, you know, uh, it was a little bit of a sore subject for me, but uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down here. We're gonna find one of these that looks good enough for us. In this case, I'm gonna grab the success one because I like the check mark. Uh, but of course, there's a whole bunch of different options, including stuff where you could add like a, you know, user profile picture if you had like device with avatar set up. But we're gonna grab the success one here, which is just this first one, copy it, hit F11. We can come over to our side panel, come into our views, right click new folder. We'll just call it shared because I'm unoriginal today. And we can do a underscore notifications.html.erb. Hit control B to hide the side panel. And then we'll just paste in this notification. So this right now will just be a pretty uh, bare bones thing as soon as we render this. So let's come into our posts and I guess our uh, index. Well, let's do it in our application.html.urb file. That way we don't have to do this multiple times. Uh, so we can pretty much put this wherever we want to. We'll just put it right here, I guess. And we'll say this is going to render a partial. The partial will be the shared slash notifications. And then we, uh, for now, I, well, I guess we can just do this. We'll say this has some locals. Let me hit F11. Has some locals. And in here, we want to pass in a message, which we'll just say is the uh, flash notice just something for right now. We're not using the message, of course, but that at least gives us something. So that'll position it right here. And if you go through the Flowbyte docs a little bit, you should eventually stumble across something that tells you uh, that you can give this a couple of custom classes to tell it where to position itself. So we're gonna come up in here into this list of classes. Before the flex, we'll just put in the word absolute. We can refresh and you can see now everything is under the notification under the toast, right? So let me scroll out a bit. So now it's positioned absolute. We can give it a uh, top class and we can give it a right class. So we can say, all right, we want this to be top dash five, something like that, moves it down. And then we can do something like right dash five, moves it over to the right. If we want it to be on the bottom, we just do a bottom dash five. And of course, for the left side of the screen, we can do the same thing. Because this is a thing that pops up above everything else, it doesn't inherently matter if it's like above the text or whatever. Like if we have text down here, uh, it, you might want to reposition it. it. In that case, like maybe you, you really want the user to be able to see like the, the footer or whatever, uh, then you would maybe, you know, increase the amount that it's offset. But we can still dismiss it, it works just fine. We can put it wherever we'd like to and we can pretty much set it and forget it. So that takes care of actually generating this. Now, of course, we might wanna put some text in here so we could change this and have this say like our message, right? So we had that message appear. Uh, and then if we do this, we can refresh and you'll see nothing appears here. So the issue is if we have a empty message, we don't want to display this. So we might wanna say something like if message, then display this, this toast notification, refresh, and now it disappears. Now, if you want to test this, you can come into like your, oops, I guess that is a good way for VS Code to crash. Uh, if you want to test this, if you're wondering why there's random cuts in some videos, that would be why. Uh, you can come into like your post controller, maybe. We're on like the show page. We can come in here and we can just say flash uh, notice is equal to uh, just testing, dude. And then save that, come over here and hopefully refresh. And now we can see we have some te uh, text to work with. So of course we don't want to have it say this every time, but uh, for right now, this is perfectly fine. Now the key here is if we don't do the show, right? So let's say we comment this out. If we come back to the index page, we don't have that just testing dude anymore if we refresh, but now if we come in and create a new post, we'll say test and case. We can then click create post. And now we can see post was successfully created because this is hooked up to our flash notices, we're already getting that notice here from our post creation in our scaffold where we call this notice after we create it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but now the natural question becomes, how do we get this to actually disappear? So for that, we can come over to the stimulus components page. We need to do a yarn add command because we're using ES build, we can do this. We can just call yarn add stimulus dash notification. That'll go ahead and add that package to us to the package.json down here. So we have the 2.2.0 stimulus notification. Then we can go ahead and run a bin slash dev again to start our server. Come over here. 
refresh and we'll see that nothing has really changed, right? Like it's not appearing and disappearing because we haven't uh, set it up to render anything. We can just type some nonsense in. It'll do this, but it won't disappear. So to get this to disappear, we can either do what they suggest here, which is set up a include or an import in our app JavaScript controllers index page. We import the notification and then we register this imported notification controller, or you can set up your own notification controller and just include that import statement in it and extend from the notification controller. So if I scroll down here a bit, we might see that. Uh, so instead of in our app JavaScript controllers notification controller, instead of importing controller and extending controller, we can import notification and extend notification. And then any functionality we want to override, we then have to first call super.connect unless you want to override it before the super fires, then you put it before the super. Uh, that'll just call the notifications connect method, or there's also a show in here or a hide that you could also call. Uh, and then you do whatever your logic is. So in this case, this is fine for me, but this isn't going to make this work out of the box because we do still have to set up uh, some of the logic up here. Now there's two different options. One is the basic usage and the other one is to initially hide it and then show it later by calling a custom window event. Now we don't really need to do that here because uh, we're going to uh, you know, just set this from the controller and have it redirect. So it doesn't really need to do that pop in. So let's go over to wherever our page is here, our, our notification right here. And what we want to do is add these into this, this div right here. So I'm going to come over here. We have our ID. I'm going to move this down. We have our classes and then we have a role of alert. That's all fine. Doesn't really matter. Uh, and then after the role, what we want to do is add in some of that some of that text. So we're going to add in the data controller. This is our notifications controller that we can see right up here, the JavaScript file. We then want to add the uh, other options that they had there, which I think were something like this. So this is, and again, I'll have a link to all of this in the video description if you want to, to use these resources so you don't have to type this all out. Probably should have said that earlier. Uh, but it's the data notification delay value. So how long the delay is, the transition from and to. So it's going to transition from zero opacity to 100 on, on load uh, if you set it to have that initial hidden value, wherever that is, the class hidden right here. Uh, and then it, you'd have to set up this event. Uh, and then when it leaves, you can also set whatever opacity it starts at, which is going to be 100, and whatever opacity it ends at, which is going to be zero. So it's full visibility to invisible as it transitions. Now, if we save this, I wouldn't expect this to work, and I'll explain why in a second. We can come back here, create a new post, one, two, three, one, two, three, click create post, and we'll wait two seconds. And you can see it just pops out like that. It doesn't fade out. The reason for that is we have to add the uh, transitions here. So we want to tell this that it needs to have a transition, a transform, a duration of 1000. We'll go ahead and we'll save those. Now, if we come back, we can do a new post. One, two, three, one, two, three, click create post. And now you can see that pop in and then that pop out. And it's fading in and out just like we tell it to here with the enter from and the enter to. Uh, and it looks like we don't even need to have that uh, custom event because of our logic here. So that's pretty cool. Didn't even realize that during the demo. Now, the only other thing I want to do here is in our uh, show method, we want to change this to just say, just testing dude. Uh, and the reason we want to do that is uh, when we come over here, let me just refresh a couple times. When we come over here, we want to have this button work when we click it. So in order to do that, we can see in the stimulus docs here that it has a, uh, where is it? The notification uh, hide right here. I'm going to put it here in the button itself. I'll put a data dash action for notifications hide. If we come over here and we refresh, we can now hopefully click that button and have it dismiss immediately rather than waiting for that transition. But yeah, that's all I pretty much wanted to talk about. I just thought it was a really neat use case. So, you know, hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully this was helpful and hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.